It's All right, fun. let's let's talk about clone because this is a freaky bot. I call it a freaky bot because, well, see for yourselves, this it's, is the stuff of nightmares. It's it's not a bot; it's an android. Okay. It's an android. Okay. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. It's it's that is a very important um, distinction. It, yes. They're they're really trying to build an android, not so much a, a mechanical. Robot. Why would you want to build an android? Why not? Um, you know, I mean, you know, the, fine. If it's if it's a, I mean, if it's a cool science experiment, great. But the complexity of this, and we've seen the torso earlier, the, mm -hmm. the sheer complexity of this. When you're trying to replicate the human system, the human body, literally, do you need to do that? Is the question. I think eventually and you what, do. And what are the? I mean, what's what's the upside of it? What, what can you do with this that you can't do with a bot? Um. <laughs> Just the musculoskeletal system of this is re resembles that of a human much closer, uh, which okay. is kind of part of the reason. So you get it's it's very hard to duplicate human motions with the the bots that we we're seeing out there. They they don't have an actual hip joint. They don't have a ball and socket joint up on the shoulder. They're doing other things to get similar kind of movement out of them. Um, they're very very kind of stiff, and um, it's definitely a long term project. And, and I. I know they're they're very bullish that they'll be able to get something out a lot sooner. I think it's it's going to be a bit more complex than they they think. And the, yeah. the real thing comes down is is their actual power source is not internal. It's it's still I think it might be like pneumatically driven. Uh, so they've got something external to it to be able to do it. And how you're able to miniaturize that and get it in, um, it's freaky. It's weird, but and it's something you would not have attempted to do 15 years ago because the control for it would have been almost impossible. But now with neural nets and everything, um, yeah, it, it's it's basically the future. If you know, it's going to be done eventually, and yeah. when it's done, everyone's probably going to prefer this over to no, the. No, I mean, sure. Ones. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not, yeah. I'm not criticizing. Yeah, yeah, this. yeah, yeah. It's, it's great yeah. for science. It's great for for robotics yeah. and and AI. But is I, I should have maybe the question is: Is this the time for it? Do we have the underlying technologies and the AI and the hardware? They're in place to support the development of this because it's going to be doing it from scratch. The question is also: Will they survive long enough? I mean, yeah, this, yeah, right, this right. is really. I would really like this to survive, uh, but in one or two years, a lot of these other companies will be selling thousands of bots and having yep. big revenue streams coming in. Will these guys still have the funding and uh, and uh, what do you call it the the will to continue, or is it a, a project with some really, uh, really interested individuals? And when they do something else, the project goes away because there yeah. are cheaper alternatives. You know, and... that's that's exactly the risk. And uh, hey, more power to the team uh, right. behind Clone. And if you're if you're watching, and I know sometimes you do, please do come on. We'd love to chat with you. We've got the expert duo here. But again. You know, it's it's market forces, it's competition, it's the complexity of building something, and not just building, let's say, just one or two of these um, for demos and for experiments, but to scale it up and offer it as a viable product to the market. That I mean, do you think it's, it's possible? It, yes, it's hard to do now because it's, it's probably very very complex. But once you start adding more and more of these automation, remember these things will eventually be building themselves or you know other versions of them be able to do it. So you know, at first you're going to say, yeah, this is like going to be very complex. An automobile is extremely complex. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you think about what goes in a car, it's crazy. Yet you know we're able to make it that people can afford it. So yes, it can be done. It's not, not saying it's easy. They will be able to do that and get to there at some point. And we're going to need some breakthroughs along the way. So at this point, while they're using hydraulics um, or pneumatics, one, one or the other, to, to be able to actually do the actuation, it doesn't mean that's what they expect it to be long term. They're probably either working on or hoping someone comes up with a real synthetic muscle. Yeah. You know, and, and, and once someone comes up with that, that's going to be a breakthrough technology. And then everyone's going to start using it. And then you might start seeing hybrids because, you know, having right now those muscles may not be strong enough to support all the limbs and do everything but they might be able to do a lot with a hand in some places where you're trying to miniaturize things that suddenly it's like wow wait a minute we we can use one of these artificial muscles 
um, to do part of it. And then maybe the rest of it, we do something else. And then you might see it slowly kind of take over that it literally becomes kind of a Borg, <laughs> you know, it's half, <laughs> half machine, half human like, and then eventually yeah. it becomes all human like. Yeah. yeah so, I mean, I, 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 sorry, go ahead. Gustav. Yeah. The lateral stability with the abduction, adduction, for instance, and the thumb and the little finger opposition it might be that this type of muscles would function much better there than at least a tendon based where you have yes. like a, a a spool that's running it instead you have this uh, uh, artificial muscle contracting and uh, relaxing exactly. is yes. probably going to be better in the long run or ease it could give more control but um so i'm hoping they manage that and maybe that's where someone should focus on just these small versions of these muscles to control the hand and maybe the i don't know other smaller joints and functions yeah and, and, and there's definitely a lot of work you you will see there are people showing examples of artificial muscles and i think they have a, a lot of problems right now probably like the range of motion is not enough they're not able to uh, create enough force um, they may be kind of weak in a way. So if you put too much strain on, they break very easily. The reaction times may not be there. Um, so they just need to have more force, be able to do it more compactly and do it cheaper. And, and also the robustness. I, I think some of these, they look nice, but once you put them through a lot of cycles, they just break <laughs> because yeah, yeah. the nature Reliability, of how it's kind of put yeah. together. Yeah. So a lot of those things have to be solved. They probably will be. I'm sure clones got a team looking at it or thinking about the yeah. problem but them doing this is probably inspiring a bunch of other people to think about it for as sure, well for sure i just i just worry about there being too many moving parts um I, you parts know in, you in a way you, you never know what the solutions are because I've, I've seen some things recently that some people say that there's like been some incredible breakthroughs recently with a lot of these uh, uh ai's going and solving problems that some yeah, um, yeah. biologists and others had not been able to solve yeah, before yeah. and it yeah. may be that uh, one of these, you know, chat GPT eight or something like that. It's like design an artificial muscle for me. And it's like, whoop, <laughs> here's all, all the information you need. So it may be that's where the breakthroughs are going to come through. Ironically, is that the AIs will show us what's going to be the, the best way to build these. Well, it's, it's definitely fascinating. Um, it's a great um, science experiment. Uh, it's, it has potential, but I don't know if it's, if it's ready for the times we live in right now, perhaps. It's yeah, you never know with Neuralink uh, when it's uh, when you can upload yourself to a, your consciousness and your memories and all your learnings and experience to a Neuralink uh, sleeve. Uh, then you'll need one of these bots if you want to leave the human body behind and kind of yeah. <laughs> become mm -hmm. an android. Mm -hmm. You become an Apple or an android. Yeah, I'd become an android any day. Yeah. <laughs>